Welcome back to another episode of The Shack Show. And in this episode, I'm going to be talking about something that uh, it took me a while to figure out, but I actually figured it out um, this year. And it's kind of annoying because I always believed that it was different, it, that this didn't matter. But the less and less fish that we've had around uh, over the past few years have really made me, uh, number one, really believe that this is 100% a true thing that happens. And number two, like, it really is going to make or break the fact of why a spot is not producing or why a spot is producing. And it's just like, it's just very unfortunate that we just don't have a lot of fish around anymore because then this wouldn't even matter. But because we don't, you can do everything right and you can still not catch fish. And that's kind of why, that's kind of what I'm going to try to explain why that happens uh, and uh, what I found this year. So I wanted to talk about bass moving in waves. And yeah, we all know that bass move in waves in the fall and in the spring in a, in a major, major way. Uh, to where like you can see, literally you'll be seeing like there being a ton more fish around and then there not being as many fish around. And then all of a sudden there's a ton more fish around. And then you can follow them up and down the coast, both on the fall run and the spring run. And especially in the fall run, you can literally visually see the waves of fish because they'll be actually blitzing. Um, it doesn't happen as, as often you get blitzes in the spring, but it does happen uh, depending on what the fish are feeding on and, and what's going on that spring. So I wanted to talk about this because I really learned it the hard way this year. Um, I fish many, many different spots all over Cape Ann, but I've had a few in the past that are kind of my go-tos, and I'm sure everybody has those spots where you know, they just really produce for you and they, they catch, you catch fish there. And even if you're not like catching really, really big fish there, you know, they're kind of your go-to spots. You're really familiar with them. You've fished them tons and tons of times. Uh, and most of the time, the reason you fish them that much is because you're having some sort of success there. Um, in, in my case, uh, I was having a lot of success for many years, catching extremely large bass there around the moon phases. Um, I had everything dialed in. I mean, the tides, the wind, the the current, the moon, like anything that could affect those fish, the bait, anything that could affect those fish, I had it dialed in, written up, and logged. And I knew for a fact that if the fish were feeding on this bait, they'd be here at this part of the tide, and they'd be there for, you know, a few, for like this part of the tide in this spot, and then they move to this part of the tide. If there's a hurricane, they'll be feeding here at low tide, and then feeding here at high tide. And like I had it so dialed in, I could literally catch big bass no matter what the tides were in that spot. Uh, and if the wind direction was the way I wanted it, I could guarantee fish being there. And if it was not, I knew that it was going to be quiet. And I knew that if they were going to be anywhere, there's going to be a specific little corner that those bass would be in. And that was like 50% of the time when the wind was off the wrong direction that you'd be able to find fish in that spot. So, but the one thing that was constant is if it was a new moon or a full moon, you'd 100% be catching big fish there. And that's what happened for years and years and years. I'm talking five plus years. I fished the spot. I found it like five years ago. I fished the spot really hard. I caught bass. I mean, I've caught countless 25 pound bass, countless 35 pound bass, a dozen or more 40 pound bass, and even a few bass that were 50 inches, which I didn't get a weight on that could have been right in that probably just shy of 50 pound size, but, uh, I've caught some serious, serious bass there. Um, I've lost some serious bass there. I've had epic nights there, um, where you're catching dozens of really big bass. Um, and then I've, you know, it's, it's one of those places that I just have such a appreciation for because it just has the perfect structure to hold big fish. You can get them during the day. You can get them at night. Um, and then, you know, as the years progressed, the, that spot was getting worse and worse and worse every year. Uh, the first year I fished it, obviously I didn't know as much as I did now about it, but I was still catching a lot of a lot of really nice fish there. And I knew certain parts of it and I learned a lot and I logged a lot and I had certain theories, but I didn't know at the time, you know, why there's fish in certain areas at certain parts of the tide, which I do now. And looking back at it, me stumbling into these fish and then catching dozens of them and they're all being 25 to 35 pounds during, you know, five years ago, I was like, I can't even imagine if I had the knowledge I have now of that spot, how many big fish I would have caught back then. I mean, it would have been, and it was one of those spots where it's just super private, almost impossible to get to. And, uh, I had this one little tiny secret path to get in there and 
Um, you know, I, I somehow would get in there and get yelled at and was able to fish there during the day and at night and was just very lucky to be able to fish there. And, um, and then the more that I fished it, the, it, it just was, it was one of those things that like, yeah, I caught a lot of, I was, I keep going on, like I caught a lot of really nice fish, but each year, you know, I'd catch less fish, but I'd learn a lot. So then I'd end up catching somewhat of a, uh, somewhat of an equivalent amount of fish. Once I got really good at that spot to what I did back when the fishing was actually kind of okay in that area. Um, and then through obviously a lot of our regulation problems and our commercial fishing problems, uh, the commercial guys found that area out and they just drained it for two, three years, just draining the fish and draining the fish and draining the fish. And then it gets to where we are now where, you know, you can fish that with all the perfect conditions in the right spot and there might be fish there and there might not be. And then realizing why that is. And then realizing not only that in that spot, why that is, why is that the entirety of Cape Ann? And uh, it really comes down to the way that the bass move. You have to think about this now because it's, it's one of those things that's really difficult to fully grasp and understand because I didn't actually believe that that was the case. I always believed there's enough fish around that if it's, if you're fishing a spot that has extra good structure and an extra good place for them to feed, they're going to stage up in there regardless because there's going to be bass happening to move through that area, at least at one point throughout the six hour, the six hour tide that they would be in that spot. So I always had that, like that thought in my mind, like regardless of if it's, you know, um, regardless of what's going on, the fact of the matter is if it's a new or a full moon, I'm going to at least catch one really nice fish out of that spot at night because there has to be a nice bass that swims through there and there has to stage up and start feeding because it's just too good. At the, st the structure is just too good for them not to stage up at least for a few minutes to try to feed. And I, that was my philosophy in that spot. And it worked for years. Like I was, the, I could go there and at least even on the Slowest nights I was pulling one bass that was like 25, even up to like 40 pounds. Like you'd be, you'd be unlucky to catch, to not catch a bass or at least get a hit in run of like a bigger fish when it was a full or a new moon. And you would have good fishing in those, in that spot from three days before the full or the new moon, during the full or new moon, and then three days after. Everything was amazing. Like the, if, even if it was not the greatest conditions, you'd always at least run into one fish a night and uh, you'd have these huge tides and the, the waves would be always pretty big because in that spot, the current would really kick them up. And uh, regardless of if it was flat calm out, you'd at least have some swell coming in around those moon phases in that spot, which just really keep, kicked up the fishing. And it was always just, as I was saying, it's always great fishing there. At least you'd have a shot at one fish. And then this year is the first year where that doesn't matter. You know, there if there's fish there, they're there because of something and they're there not based on the fact that they were just moving through because if there were fish there you're going to catch more than one and that's what happened this year um i really had a hard time uh f figuring out why i wasn't catching fish in the spot for the first time even though everything was perfect and i was fishing and believe me i was fishing six hours i was like the whole tide i was fishing and I would get not a single hit the entire night, even though every single condition was perfect. And if that was last year, the year before that, or the year before that, you know, I'd have at least caught one fish or I would have caught 25 fish that were big. And it didn't matter that it was, um, you know, it didn't matter what was going on. You would at least tangle with one big fish and that just wasn't the case. And so uh, I was talking to a lot of other guys on Cape Ann about this and I was like, this is just odd. And obviously everybody's like all down about the fishery and they're like, oh, it's just because the fishery, it's just because the fishery. Um, and then I was talking to one guy in particular who's like, yeah, I mean, the fish move in waves. So you got to imagine like you're going to have fish in, in one area and then they're going to move a little further south and they're going to move a little further south and a little further south. So he's like, I know they're here. So you probably had a good night at that date. And sure enough, the date that he named, I happened to have had a really good night. And then I was like, that's very interesting. And so that always stuck in the back of my head after having that conversation with him, uh, because I was like, there's no way he knew that that he was like, if you were in that area, you had a good night. And I happened to be in that area and I happened to have a good night that night. And, um, it, it just was so funny that like, that, I mean, whatever that was kind of clicked. And so then I started talking to a lot of other guys and whenever they'd be like, oh, you know, the north side of Cape Ann is on. I'd go to the north side of Cape Ann 
and I'd be able to find fish. But if I was on the south side of Cape Ann and the fishing was, and all the conditions were perfect, I wouldn't catch anything. And everybody on the north side was catching fish. And then they would be in the middle and then they would be on the south side. And it was like this, like, it was literally like clockwork. You'd be able to figure out that the fish were here at certain port, like certain times of the, the day or certain times of the year. And then they kind of slowly move, you know, from week to week. And it all depended on like, if there's a lot of bait around or what was going on, but uh, those fish were moving waves, whether they're moving south in waves or north in waves, uh, they were gonna be in one spot, then move a little further north, then a little for further north and a little further north. Um, and because during the bulk of the summer, they're kind of pointing north because the water was really warm this year, they, they were slowly moving north and north and north. So you would find fish on one side and then they'd move to the middle and then they'd move to the north side and then they would be gone. And so that was what was happening. And we had certain moons that, that, that there were big fish around. And then there were certain time periods where it was in between the moon phases when you'd have those pushes of, of nicer sized bass that were moving through. And uh, it was far, far less than any year we've ever seen. But uh, you could kind of plan it out that like, okay, if you knew your friends were in this general area catching fish, you didn't even know what spot they were fishing. You just knew they were in this general area. If you staged up in that general area, you would actually end up catching pretty decent fish. And uh, that to me, you know, I was able to just collect enough data points over time to realize, okay, that's more of the case. Because what it used to be is that you'd have resident fish and there'd be enough resident fish around that it didn't matter what was going on. You'd have bass that were all over the place and they'd be moving up and down and cruising around and staging in different points at different spots and different points of the tide. And you'd be able to pinpoint that down and catch fish, but that was not the case now the case is like you have a biomass of fish that are moving by different areas, but they're not sticking around, they're moving. And that was something that was very interesting because I never really thought about it that way and I never really like believed that that was the case. I always thought there was resident fish, especially for where we are. I know this is much more of a case because you talk to guys in New York and Long Island, uh, which I, I talk a lot to and I have friends that are extremely good fishermen that fish that area and catch a ton of really big fish. And they say the same thing, they have resident fish and those resident fish, you know, will stage up in certain areas, but for the most part, you're going to have waves of those fish moving through during different points of the year. They'll be in different spots. Um, and the more you log it, the better you'll be able to gauge where those fish will be during different times of the year. So that's the point that uh, I wanted to make. But now that it's getting even worse and worse, you got to imagine that like what you're going to log now, I won't even be able to tell you if that's going to be correct, but it's possible that those fish will be in those exact spots during during that time of year, every single year. Is that the case necessarily? I personally don't think so. I think it kind of is gonna more depend on the water temperature, especially for us. And then also like what the bait's doing, cause they could end up staying, you know, a week longer, like south of us and then moving, moving on to Cape Ann a week later than they did the year before. Uh, that would make more sense. But the other thing that I was told to do uh, not told to do, but the other thing that I was told uh, one of my friends does is he was saying, I even log when people are seeing fish way north of me and way south of me. Like I'll log both sides of the spectrum. And uh, that's very interesting because uh, he's like, whenever I get a text saying, oh, this general area is on, he'll log it even if it's way north of them. Because he's like everything, then like, you know, a few weeks later I get, a little further so say they're way north and then all of a sudden you're logging them from each little stage of where they are down the coast and then you kind of have a knowledge of where they're going to be at different times of the year depending on the water temperature in the in then you can log and then this gets even crazier because then you can log like okay there was the water temp was here so and they were uh there was this weather event and then they showed up here and that's what he was talking about logging. And I hope this makes sense, sense to you guys because it's actually really complicated. And it was hard for me to wrap my head around until I realized that this is the day and age in the fishery that we live in. Like we got to do stuff like this to be able to actually pinpoint when the bass are going to be in your area so that you can fish the most effectively. So I'm almost thinking of the whole coast as just one giant area. And if you can imagine that one giant area during different times of the year, obviously is going to be good. And uh, if you log that whole area, you're gonna be able to find specific spots, which are really giant areas that there's gonna be fish. And then within those giant areas that are those specific spots, there's gonna be even more specific spots, which are areas that have fish. And I know that is unbelievably complicated, but 
uh, it's true. So pretty much what I'm trying to say is the whole coastline, there's going to be fish moving up and down. You have different biomasses. There's, a, there's dozens of them that move up and down the coast at different times of the year. If you can kind of log based on the water temps in completely different states where they were, so you can say like they were in Connecticut and then they ended up in Massachusetts and then they up, ended up in Maine, you know, between like, and they're in Connecticut for this long and the water temperature got to this temperature and it was this time of year and then they moved to Massachusetts and then they moved to, you get what I'm trying to say here. Like you can kind of log when you're gonna have those different biomasses in your area. So I know that is really, really complicated and uh, it's something to just think about and try to kind of hopefully get you guys to wrap your head around a grander scale of what you are gonna have to do now to catch big bass consistently because it's not gonna be as consistent as it's been in years past and only to, in the only way you're gonna be able to catch a lot of big fish next year is gonna be having to be really smart about it because if you think that you're gonna be able to go into last year like you did the year before or the year before, like I did going into this season, it's just not gonna work out for you. Like it didn't really work out for me this year. I got very lucky and caught, I had some amazing nights, but they were luck, believe me. Like I was just trying new things and trying out uh, new spots and I just happened upon some fish and you know, talked to guys that fished those areas a lot and we we're like, this, this is an unheard of night to have there. So that's why like when I got lucky, I really got lucky. And uh, I'm trying to not get lucky next year. I'm trying to use data to somehow explain why the fish are where they are at different times of the year and uh, hopefully expand my range because I fish very small area. I fish 25 minutes around where my house is. So I'm very fortunate to be literally like a few minutes from the, from the water. And so I can drive all around Cape Ann and catch fish uh, the entire day. And uh, it's, it, that's like what's super awesome to me because I can, I can really fish a lot. And then also like I have access to areas where these fish are gonna be moving throughout the year. And uh, now you just gotta expand that. And I learned a lot about the one little area that I learned and now I can expand north and now I can expand south. And eventually, you know, you're gonna be able to cover more water. And then if you get even on a greater scale, and I know a lot of guys do, do this, they'll be moving states. They'll be literally driving to those states that are far away from them because they've already logged that there's gonna be fish there. So they know that they're gonna be in that area. And then they go there and they spend some time, they take some, you know, a few years to learn some spots, but then they learn spots all the way up and down the coast and they can follow those biomasses of fish around. And that's how you catch a lot of really, really big fish. And when you go on Instagram and you scroll through and you see these guys who are catching ginormous bass, and uh, believe me, like a lot of those guys that are catching ginormous bass are guys that do that. You know, they cover ground, they look for fish, and they, they log a lot. Uh, I thought that that was something interesting I should, I should talk about because I, I, there's a lot of stuff that I, you know, have spinning around my head for next season. Um, I know our season's not technically over. I mean, you could go out right now and grind for a few schoolies, but it, for the most part, we're not, we don't have any fish of real size around and substance around. So uh, I haven't been doing a lot of fishing. I poke around a little bit here and there, but as far as the really getting down dirty and trying to find these big bass for next season goes, it's gonna be unbelievably hard. You know, I, I talk to a lot of guys around me who are just like, I'm I, like, they're really, really good fishermen and they're not humble at all. And they think they're the best and they think that they catch all the big fish in the world and they and there's like no issues with catching big fish for them. And they're like, I don't know what's gonna happen next season. It's gonna be really, really tough to catch big fish. And when they're saying that, that's when I get a little worried and kind of think on these greater scales of how can you kind of outsmart the fish and outsmart the, the bad fishery and uh, kind of use it in your own way to be able to have the greatest success possible next season. So I know this is a pretty complicated topic and I know if you're kind of a beginner surfcaster, this is gonna be a little bit difficult to grasp and seem very daunting to think about, but believe me, on a smaller scale, you can kind of figure that whole thing out. As I was saying, one small area like Cape Ann, which is, you know, whatever we can, I can drive the whole thing in 25 minutes. That's a, that's not very far. Uh, those bass are going to be at, during different weeks and months of the season. They're going to be at different points uh, on Cape Ann and uh, you can log that stuff. 
And really what I'm saying is you should log that stuff. If you're in a spot and you're catching fish, that's amazing. Catch fish there as much as you can, even if you're catching schoolies. If it seems to slow down, don't don't uh, be afraid to try to try a new area, try new spots, move north, move south, try a few spots that are not where that is because it's more than likely, you know, those bass that were there have moved because now it's like, now there's not bass that stay in one spot all season. Like we had bass that were like almost resident fish in certain spots. Like you could go or th go there and I kid you not, they're probably the same bass every single time that were in those spots that love to feed there. And those were those fish that have now been, unfortunately, and it's true, the commercial guys have drained them. And especially those fish in particular, the commercial guys have 100% drained them because I've been there during the day and I've had commercial guys pull their boat four feet away from the rock that I'm fishing on throw adult bunker out there, catch six 30 pound bass and drive away with them. So it's, it's just really brutal when you see something like that happening day after day and times hundreds of them in your zone. And you know that, you know, each year it's been getting worse and worse in that exact spot to the point that you are almost not going to fish that spot next year because you don't think that there's going to be fish there because of how badly it was pulled from commercial fishermen. Anyway, that was a little bit of a rant that I went on as well. So uh, I apologize about that. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. It really helps me out if you can do that. And I'll see you next time.